Hello, hello. It has been a very long time, and I'm sorry. I have to explain real quick why it's been nine months since I've uploaded. It's uh, because the last three videos that I made, maybe even more than that, but the last three major videos that I made for this channel uh, would never upload. Uh, anyway, that's the, that's the short version of it, and it was very frustrating and you know a lot of work and time went into the editing portion of it, only to have it not upload at all. And I just, I just was so busy with other things, with gardening and whatnot. You know, all the many, many things that go on um, on this homestead, that it was easier just to focus on those important matters and, and not worry about, about sharing it. But I know a lot of you have, have been wondering about us wondering how we're doing. Um, anyway, my, my apologies. I I know I, I've done this before. I'm sorry I did it again. Just kind of left people hanging. But um, if that ever happens again, you can always find us in, on Instagram. Or, Instagram is so easy. To, <laughs> I don't like cross-promoting. I, I know if you're preferred uh, form of, of social media is YouTube, then the last thing you want to do is jump over to another one. But if, if you happen to have Instagram, Instagram, um, we're pretty active on there just because it's, it's so easy to, to do it. It's not about homesteading over there. It's just about my art. But Laura Jean and I both have accounts there. Anyway, um, so another quick thing I was just thinking about is I should just get a video camera, an actual video camera. Back when we were making daily videos a year or two ago, I had a really, really nice camera, an SLR, and quite expensive and quite heavy and cumbersome, and yet we made it work and uh, functioned as a really really good quality video camera. I'm gonna get one of those cheap, cheap but you know, dedicated video cameras. Um, I think it'll work better to have, have one that's, that's made for videos. That way I don't have to just rely on my phone and, and have it mess up all the time like it has been doing. And upload it to the computer, edit it easily, be confident that it'll work, move on with life. <laughs> But, um, look at this. Uh, I bought a, a good quality Swiss, Swiss blade uh, scythe from Scythe Supply. Uh, they're, in, they're in Maine, but they get their, their blades from, from Switzerland. Anyway, really good quality thing. It's so much better, so much easier than the, the American style ones that I've used in the past. I mean, no comparison whatsoever. However, I did push myself a little too hard and <laughs> hurt my shoulder a little bit, just the, just the muscle, but I hurt it pretty good. It is healing, but I, I was so excited to just get a whole section of the, of the grass mown. You can't tell now. I mean, it looks like just badly kept yard grass now, but it was like two feet tall and, you know, good quality stuff, good quality grass, and I, I cut it all <laughs> in, in one hour, pushed myself to finish it, and I pushed myself too hard. Anyway, so I'm taking a little break from scything, but you can see a little, little pile still of, of hay that's been drying. The cows ate the rest of it already. Um, I mean, you've, you've been seeing a little bit of the flower beds and everything back here. I'm going to set this hose on some of the new trees that we bought. There's a plum. It's doing terribly. But it is still alive. Looks like it's suffering from iron deficiency, so I've given it some chelated iron. And it seems to be doing a little bit better, but that, tough, that stuff takes a little, takes just a little bit a little bit of time to to really do its job. 
an Italian plum that I I bought from someone at the gardener's market a couple weeks ago. Kind of excited about that. That's where you get prunes. So good for food storage. A maple tree there. Maple tree here. This one obviously needs water, which is why I'm out here right now. Okay, I'm gonna set that there. Let that water for a little while. Sorry, doing this all one-handed. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna turn that down so I can slowly soak. Let's say hi to Beans. Hey, Beans. Come here, kitty. Come say hi. He's not gonna say hi. Anyway, our little friend Beans. We love them. We love our kitties. So, out in the garden. Well, let me orient you. We've made a little fence out of some reclaimed wood. Over by the, the old, big, original apple tree here. And now out in the garden where we had um, elderberries. We were harvesting those berries a lot last year. Looks like those are just starting to bud. So it looks like we're gonna get another huge harvest. That's that's pretty cool. I um, I never know what to expect. Uh, sometimes we get a good harvest every only only every other year on a lot of our fruit trees. Um, last year, for example, we got. A fantastic harvest of, of peaches on our tiny little tree and this year not a single you know, not a single blossom so you know it just just depends on the weather mostly around here if we get a late frost or or um, you know whatever else happens with the weather up and down weather it doesn't like that either I've planted some castor beans. There's nothing to show yet, but I've planted about 10 castor beans around the perimeter of the property. And for those of you who know, castor beans are poisonous. You have to be careful. Don't let them be where kids can get to them, unless the kids are very knowledgeable about what they are and to not touch them. You know, they know not to touch them. But anyway, so castor beans, um, you know, a little bit scary because they are poisonous, but they do a really, really good job of, of deterring um, ground-dwelling creatures, one of which I can see literally right now digging a hole. You can see the... I just, I just sprayed castor oil on the garden yesterday and watered it in, and so everything that was in the ground is now scurrying, you know, trying to figure out what's going on with this bad smell, <laughs> and, uh, you know, running away. Now that I see that that hole is active, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you. Little brat, that little, it's a vole. Well, this one might be a small gopher, but you see it right there, a little pile. When I walked over here, you could see it kind of moving up and down. So there's obviously a, a live creature in there right now. Um, anyway. Where the where the castor bean plants grow, and they are quite large plants, six seven feet tall, and the same diameter or width. And uh, wherever they grow, they'll deter uh, burrowing rodents um, for for many years. So that's the plan. Behind me, I have a teeny little plot of wheat. It's my first time actually growing wheat in a, uh, in a plot. See the pollen just forming on it. Kind of cool. It's not very tall, but it does seem to be relatively productive. So this is about a 10 by 15 foot plot, 150 square feet of wheat. Not very big. We're not going to get much out of that. It's not, not enough to really do anything with, but I want to uh, prove the concept. Uh, figured out 
on a small plot. Um, I actually now wish I would have done a little bit bigger, but I planted it in the springtime, early spring. Uh, around here, most people plant their wheat in the in the fall, so they they do winter wheat. This is actually a winter wheat variety, but I planted it in the spring. That's probably why it's not very tall. But again, seems productive. So we'll see how, how much we get out of that. Um, kind of cool that I only uh, planted a handful of wheat. I'm just guesstimating, but we'll probably get about 25, 30 pounds out of that. We'll see. Hopefully that's not too, too high of an estimate. Um, I've got some beets planted there. Jerusalem artichokes, more Jerusalem artichokes with um, some summer greens there. Actually, I've got a lot, all kinds of things planted. I probably don't want to spend too much time giving you a garden tour, but I'll just let you see it in the background. You can also see that I've started a new chicken coop because we have a whole bunch of new chicks that are now, well, now they're almost grown up, in fact. As usual, we have um, brassicas uh, bolting and, and blossoming. We, we love them though. You know, they smell good. They're great pollinator attractants. So food for the bees and other pollinators. And the more bees you have in the garden, the better. Um, I've just planted, so this is, yeah, what is it, end of June. So here we are in the very first days of actual summer. I've just planted from seed uh, zucchinis. And it's amazing, when you, when you wait a little bit long, <laughs> you know, I, sh I could have gotten these in the ground a little earlier, could have actually transplanted um, big plants. But around here, when the, when the days are long and hot, like they are now, um, especially those, uh, those summer, um, summer squash of all varieties, just really pop up quickly and grow extremely quickly. And it's almost like there's no, there's no lost time at all. In fact, I don't, I don't see a single bit of difference between, you know, transplanting things from the greenhouse into the garden early in April or May, and you know, protecting them you know, from the frosts and taking such good care of them. They don't, they don't do any better or or produce any sooner than if I just plant them from seed in the middle of June. Amazing, amazing to me. Um, that's always been our experience. Um, got lots of potatoes, raspberries between the potatoes, really bad idea. Raspberries and potatoes compete with each other. It was, I knew it when I, knew it when I was doing it, but uh, I had kind of run out of room. I wanted to plant more potatoes is really what, what the deal was uh, for uh, storage, emergency, you know, survival kind of, kind of situation. If something were to go majorly wrong, I would want potatoes. <laughs> and so I've got lots of them. Several different varieties. Um, in my opinion, it, we could live pretty well on just potatoes if we had to for um, at least a, a semi long term um, situation. And that obviously depends on, on storage. Um, storage methods and, and, and things. But, you know, if I can... I forgot to turn off that water, by the way. Or turn it down. Turn it down to a trickle. Um, so yeah, things with lots of calories. Uh, potatoes, beets, corn, wheat. Again, just kind of an ex experimental stages of of the wheat, but I think it'll I think it'll be a good thing. We have not planted corn, and here's the reason why. Well, partially it takes up a whole lot of space. It's it's very it takes a lot of nitrogen, which you know we do have lots of in the form of chicken manure, uh, rabbit cow manure. But again, it does take a lot of space. Also, we have a uh, neighbor across the street who plants you know, 200 acres of corn. It's dent corn, so any dent corn that we grow will grow, but it'll be cross-pollinated with, with his, so we won't, it won't be true to the seed that we plant. 
and, it, and definitely the, the seeds of it will not yield a second generation that's true to what we started with. Um, also, but, but so having said all that, I am actually going to still plant corn. It's, uh, ooh, and I've forgotten the actual name. Uh, it's like a Mexican uh, blue corn variety. It's not dent, it's, uh, it's flint corn. So it's, you know, hard shell, it's um, round, uh, flower corn, rather. I guess that's flint corn. Anyway, don't quote me on that. Um, I'm still going to plant it, but I'm going to plant it over in the little greenhouse that you see there. It's, it is it is pretty small. It's, it's only 10 by 12 feet. 120 square feet of corn is not much at all. But then again, you know, for $6 a packet, um, you know, any amount I can get from that. If I can get one ear to grow, then I've probably 10 times my, my investment. I bought two packets at $6 each on Amazon. I could probably find them for cheaper somewhere. But, so they're in the house soaking, give them a little bit of a head start. As soon as they swell up a little bit, uh, I'm gonna stick them in the greenhouse. Just one one or two rows on each side. Maybe uh, 12 plants on each side, and that's, that's all the seed I got. So, what is that, $12? Golly, that's 50 cents a seed practically but uh yeah anyway anyway so um the the growing season for that is uh well it takes 100 days we're well past that point now we're definitely going to get a frost um probably within 90 days from now um but in the greenhouse hopefully we can um, extend that another month or two maybe we'll get a great harvest anyway that's the plan so, sorry, there's not, not much of a tour here. It's uh, more of just the, hey, how you doing? I'm alive still. <laughs> here are a few of the projects. I'll go into more of those projects, um, hopefully soon. You can see some of our new chickens back there in a new chicken coop. Also got the storage shed that I have been building. Um, some <laughs> that's kind of crazy. These makeshift <laughs> this this spring I just you know took 25 minutes or so and made these little outdoor chicken brooders just out of pieces of building materials that I had had around, and that's done pretty well. Chickens are happy. We've got a new. Nice enclosure for them. Last night I came out to the pond and hand dug a little section in the middle. Uh, it's, it's been pretty dry this year. So, you know, the pond water basically was all gone um, beginning two or three weeks ago. And then I hand dug probably about a cubic yard of of dirt out of there last night and and now the groundwater has come come up out of there which is always fascinating to me i love seeing that it's just it's cool to to see nature work uh, oh, those clouds are beautiful today here are the two beef cows they're getting huge they seem happy <laughs> we've been rotating them on little sections of the pro of the of the property back there on these little fields, you know, just 16 feet wide or so by about 100 feet long. And I I have been f better this year at forcing them to only stay on that one section. And of course they they can come back to where I've been watering them, uh, but just between so they they come to where I watered them right here by the house. It's a lot easier than what I was doing before, which was going, you know, running a hose clear in the heck out there to water them um, where the other barns are. Hey, chicken. Um, but, so yeah, anyway, they have the access to, to come up by the house to get their water, and then they can walk down this little skinny path to, the, to wherever I've decided to feed them that, that week or, you know, that half a week, depends on, depending on how much grass there is. But I've been forcing them to stay there so they eat not just their their favorite 
little tender bits of whatever variety of grass it is that that's, that's their favorite. But then they have to also, if they want to eat, they have to eat the stuff that they don't like as much. Kind of like, kind of like making a kid eat vegetables before they get dessert. These cows are eating their dessert first, but I'm sticking, making them stick around to eat their vegetables. Okay, well, 20 minutes long, that's good for this time. <laughs> a little bit longer than I wanted. Hey, chicken. Eating my plant. That's all right, that's healthy. All right, well, I'm gonna go into town today, see if I can find a better video camera, or, well, a video camera, so that I don't have to use my phone, which, again, has been giving me problems. I will... I don't know, I, I hate to promise anything because it seems like every time I promise, well, don't worry, I'm not going away, I'll, I'll be back soon, then I, I seem to jinx it. <laughs> so I guess I'll just say I'm gonna make some efforts, I'm gonna do some actual things that, that may help. And uh, oh, look at this beautiful rose bush. I wish I could hear all the, the bees here. Love it. It smells amazing. But uh, anyway, so I guess I'll just say I, I am making efforts to to be able to uh, more consistently put out videos. So thanks for your patience with us. Um, those of you who are looking forward to our updates and our videos, my apologies and again thanks for your patience. Those who are new, this is a very long running. Um, homesteading adventure. We bought this house going on eight or nine years ago. Something like that. Yeah, nine years now. Wow. And uh, it's just a, 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 what do you call it? I guess an experiment in turning a, an old house, an old farmstead that all of it was worthy of being torn to the ground and, and thrown away and we decided to save it instead. So it's just uh, our adventures, our, uh, the lessons we've learned through trial and error. And, uh, you know, we've had some ups and some downs. <laughs> but we, we're pretty happy with, with where it's going now. But, uh, okay, I'll talk to you guys soon. Pretty soon.